So now we're going to show you a hybrid approach to um, drum triggering, which should allow you to use Slate Trigger and have it trigger completely accurately every time. What we're going to do to do this is combine two drum replacement plugins. So we're going to use the non-real-time Massey DRT plugin, which allows you to kind of scan through the audio file and um, set your parameters and how it's going to trigger. But like how we've used other methods like Beat Detective, there's a smart algorithm in it that's detecting the transients and you can move those points around. And the benefit of this is that if it doesn't do one completely correctly, that we can move it, we can delete them and make sure that every time it's triggered perfectly. So we're going to load that up. And it's an audio suite plugin because it's non real time and DRT. So this is the dialogue and actually DRT, you can have um, samples inbuilt into it and use it without having to use trigger. However, I prefer the interface of trigger to actually doing the sampling and the sounds in it and how you can use multi mics a, uh, a little bit more easily. This is why we're using both of these plugins. So first of all, we need to analyze the selection. So now that's in, you can see the transient points and it's auto detected and found the transient points. And what you can see from this is that some of the bleed it's picked up as transient points as well. Okay, so if we go to the bottom of the screen, we see sensitivity and loudness. And we can use the sensitivity so that it's not triggering off the wrong things. Like so, and we can use the loudness again so that the dynamic range is um, more accurate to how you want it. In this case, there isn't a large dynamic range of the actual hits, so we don't need to worry about that too much. And on the right hand side here, we've got a way to turn all of the volumes up and down. Okay, and we can also reduce the dynamic range by using the other bar. Okay, so this is, as you turn it up, it's going to get less and less in terms of dynamic range and end up being complete one shots with the highest velocity. Okay, so dependent on what you're wanting to achieve, whether you want a one shot or you want dynamics, you can use these two knobs to do that. We've analyzed this and shown how this works. Um, but if we do a larger selection now, you should be able to see sometimes where it makes a mistake. And by zooming in, we can remove some of these markers and make sure that it's always triggering correctly. So it's missed one there and you can see by dragging around, we can drop one in. So let's zoom in really tight and add it in exactly the right place. Great. So now we have one. If we look around a bit more, I'm sure we'll see one that, or two that are a mistake. Okay. We've missed another one there, but what you can see from this is, how quickly you can navigate through and check for any mistakes. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, because it's quite a consistent drum performance, we're probably not going to find um, much of a problem, but ah, we can see some there that is missed as well. So we can go ahead and we can add those. And some particular um, drum examples, what you'll find is that it's not completely picked up the performance correctly and some of the hits are firing off at slightly the wrong time. So if we zoom into one particular hit in um, any particular hit really closely, we can see just how easily we can move an individual um, hit around. So the transient marker just by dragging it. And as soon as you click, it zooms really far in. So if if a couple of them have been moved to slightly the wrong place, you can really fine tune this very, very easily. Okay, so now this is done, what we can do is select the whole um, kick drum track and by hitting render, what's gonna happen is by default, without any samples loaded into the DRT engine, what it's gonna give you is a very, very short, sharp click sound. And this means that you can trigger off that and it's gonna trigger perfectly every time. So now we can see that. Let's play that so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, so we can hear that that's a sharp click and it's going to be very, very consistent and Trigger's not going to make a mistake with that. So let's reinstantiate Trigger and you can hear now what that's going to sound like.
Okay, that's great. So you can see using this technique that we get a very accurate phase coherent kick. And what you'll see is if we go to um, compare the kick in to this trigger that we've just done, if we commit the um, trigger file, So once this is done, we're going to zoom in and tab through. And what you'll probably find is sometimes you get a little bit of latency, so you need to nudge them all the same way a little bit. But after that, um, if that's happened, dependent on the amount of other plugins you've got going on, um, if once you've done that, you should find that they're triggering the same way every single time. Now that we've done that, I want to show you one more function because what you probably noticed there is a couple of them were slightly, slightly in the wrong place. So every now and then you had one that was not triggering exactly in the right place of the kick. So what we're going to do is use the Massey DRT um, learn function. So what this does is you're able to scan in one particular hit and it scans the envelope of that drum sound. And by doing so, it means that it will trigger more accurately to the same place without you actually having to zoom in and manually move every single hit. So we're going to just pick a fairly loud kick drum. And in DRT, we're going to go to the learn and learn it. So that's loaded the profile of the sound and it's now scanning the whole audio file. So by clicking Analyze now, we'll be getting a really good accurate representation that's less likely to miss trigger. And it's also um, going to make sure that it's aligning it to the start of each hit much more accurately. So we shouldn't have the same problem that we just had that when you zoom in really close to some of them, you see that it's misaligned it. OK, so now we've gone through and we've committed uh, Chorus 1 and we're just going to compare the DRT to the Slate. And what we should notice is the slate one was fairly good, but you'll see it moving around compared to the natural kick drum more than the DRT.